The majority of glitches, errors, and other goofs found in video games are not intentional whatsoever. Ubisoft certainly didn't intend to embarrass itself with Assassin's Creed Unity's downright creepy floating iceberg, and Warner Brothers clearly didn't plan for the PC launch of Batman Arkham Knight to be a broken mess. These examples, alongside many, many others, illustrate just how difficult video game development is. Because even with four years of hard work by hundreds of talented artists, things can and do go horribly wrong all the time. Because these glitches are such a common thing for gamers to deal with though, it's not unreasonable to brand even the tiniest of problems as an unacceptable error. In reality, some of these mistakes are either left in or planted intentionally by the developers. Whether it's to give the player something cool to discover, or just a funny little quirk that nobody thought was necessary to change. After gathering up one batch of these totally done on purpose gaffes and screw ups back at the end of 2018, there were plenty more thrown down in the comments below. So let's just celebrate all things mistaken, but not really, in the world of gaming. It's not falling with style, it's flying. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video game mistakes that were totally intentional. Commenters edition. Number eight, giant death launch, Skyrim. Bethesda games are notoriously buggy, to the point where it can often be unclear as to what's actually a glitch and what's actually working as intended. When it comes to the latter, one thing that works just fine in Skyrim is that your character will go all floppy when you die, kinda like a big old medieval ragdoll. Any sort of death can result in this happening, whether you get stabbed, burned, or just fall on some rocks. In addition to the ragdoll effect, some deaths will result in the player being launched across the world at an alarming speed, as though an invisible catapult was trying to shoot them into the afterlife. This mostly happens with giants, who will send you rocketing high up into the sky whenever they strike a death blow. And at face value, it seems like an amusing glitch, but it's actually an intended feature of the game. See, Skyrim's engine will convert any hit points past zero into momentum, which is why when you're killed by a giant, creatures that deal an insane amount of damage, you're just flung into low orbit. So maybe not that intentional artistically, but in terms of the game's algorithms doing what they were asked, that's just spot on. Number 7, The Unreachable Medipack, Tomb Raider 1996. The original Tomb Raider game on the PS1, as well as several of the other early games in the series, featured something called the Corner Book, which is a way for players to access areas that would not be possible to reach using the game's regular traversal mechanics. By standing next to the corner of a block and jumping towards said block, Lara would start to clip inside it. To correct the fact that Lara has now glitched inside an object, the game will reposition her on top of that block, allowing players to reach heights that normal jumping simply couldn't get to. While this was a glitch and was not meant to happen, Core Design, the developers of the original, knew all about it. And instead of fixing it, they planted a medipack in the Palace Midas level that is only reachable by exploiting this bug. Many gamers assumed that the medipack was left there accidentally, but it was totally put there on purpose as a cool nod to the popularity of this glitch across development. Number 6. Robotnik Speed Traps – Sonic the Hedgehog 3 the Sonic games are all about achieving lightning fast speeds, and this is also what makes the experience so immensely fun. This focus on speedy movement makes it incredibly weird that Sonic the Hedgehog 3 will actively punish the player for going too fast. By going too quickly at certain times, there's a chance that Sonic will clip into an object and get stuck inside it, forcing the player to start over if they want to continue. It was a frustrating bug to encounter, but bizarrely, Sega knew all about it and just decided to leave it in the game. See, page 26 of the user manual even contains a cheeky excuse as to why this might happen to the player. Dr. Robotnik has created many diabolical traps to take advantage of Sonic's ultra-fast speed. Watch out for traps that Sonic cannot escape. If you fall into the wrong trap, you might have to reset the game and start again at the beginning of the zone you were last in. When Sonic is flashing after being hit, don't let him travel too quickly. So it seems the developers left this in the game on purpose and then kinda tried to make an in-universe explanation calling it a diabolical trap in the game's manual. I mean, it's kind of genius to be honest and it's not like something Sonic related has been patched later with a much better version. Number five, Tiny Tina's Eyes, Borderlands 2. First introduced in Borderlands 2, Tiny Tina is an absolute nutcase with a penchant for explosives and a deep love of crumpets. And she'll assist the Vault Hunter in their mission to stop Handsome Jack. After encountering her for the first time, players began to notice that her left eye would occasionally flick back and forth, whilst her right eye remained still. Although this totally would have fit in with everybody else on Pandora, it looked like a straight up error, and many players assumed that it wasn't supposed to be this way. Turns out that assumption was true, at least partly. 
While developers Gearbox Software never meant for this to happen whilst they were designing and coding Tina, they decided that it matched her utterly insane and bonkers personality and chose not to fix it. Number 4. I Am Error Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link it's not often that a bug or glitch will seemingly announce itself to the player with some on-screen text, but many gamers thought that had happened when in the second ever Zelda game, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, they came across an NPC who spoke the line of dialogue, I am error. In actual fact, the word error should begin with a capital E because it's not an error at all. It is instead this NPC's name. On a separate occasion, players will encounter a similar looking NPC who says the line, Bagu is my name, show my note to Riverman. In Japanese, Bagu means bug, meaning that the game contains two NPCs with glitch related names. However, neither of these are actually glitches. To this day, it's believed that all of this came down to a designer having some fun with the character names themselves, rather than a mistake on Nintendo's part. Number three, Creepy Watson, Sherlock Holmes Nemesis. Aside from the core gameplay loop, the AI in video games is probably the hardest thing to get right. Enemy AI has to be incredibly smart and pose a suitable enough challenge to the player without being completely overbearing, while friendly AI has to be helpful without getting in the way of the action. However, instead of taking the time to properly go through all these steps and design a well-rounded system, some developers give us things like Creepy Watson from 2007 adventure game Sherlock Holmes Nemesis. In the game, you play as the titular detective himself and must try and solve the case of Master Thief Arsene Lupin. Your loyal assistant Watson will be there with you every step of the way, only in this case every step of the way means silently teleporting to your location like a creepy weeping angel as you move across the level. Watson doesn't have a walking animation and will instead instantly move to your location whenever you take your camera off him. A lot of players assume that this was a bug, but it's actually an intentional quirk of the programming, likely done in order to save time, money, and animation. Fortunately, Watson was given a walking animation in the remastered version of the game, so if you don't want any nightmares and don't want him forever over your shoulder, pick that version up instead. Number 2. Literally Everything – Goat Simulator Goat Simulator is one of the most unlikely success stories of the last decade, managing to overcome the fact that the game was a broken, buggy mess of an experience. Because of its popularity though, most people who go to pick up the title are generally aware that they should not be that prepared for a fully polished experience. Still, some are always going to question just how much of the game's errors and glitches are intentional, and how many have been purposefully added in to try and give the whole package a sense of chaotic charm. The answer to all this is pretty simple. Most of the game Games bugs are actually intentional parts of the quote-unquote gameplay. While creating their supposed masterpiece, developers Coffee Stain Studios only sought to squash out glitches that would make the game crash or freeze, but chose to leave its dodgy physics system intact. So when your tongue sticks to a wall and stretches to a ridiculous length, when you clip through surfaces, when random objects bounce around seemingly at will, and when the tiniest of impacts sends you flying halfway across the map, all that stuff is meant to be possible. It's just another day in the life of your average goat. And number one, Fleshy Bones, Quake 3 Arena. The third Quake entry was the first game in the series to ditch a traditional single player campaign and as a result, it's centered purely around arena-based shootouts. Because of this, you'll kill a lot of enemies during your time spent with the game, since that's really the only thing you can do. During your murderous rampages, you might notice that enemies explode into a smattering of fleshy chunks when killed. In the Quake series, this effect is known as jibbing, derived from giblets, and can happen to most characters regardless of their shape or size. Most interestingly though, it can also happen to bones. Bones, as the name implies, is a skeleton and doesn't carry any soft tissue on top of his basic frame. So when he gets jibbed, where does all that flesh come from? Rather than being a mistake, this is simply because developers id Software didn't create a different jibbing animation for the character, something they even acknowledged in the game's instruction manual, featuring the line, where do the jibs and blood come from? Also, it looks pretty damn cool, so there's always that. Hello YouTube, we're turning things up to 11 with the launch of What Culture Music. It's our brand new channel featuring all those lists you just can't get enough of, including creepy hidden messages in your favorite pop songs. As well as radio friendly songs that detail literal murder. That's as well as chatty faces where we get personal with you on our sordid musical tastes, in-depth discussion podcasts, and we're even doing quality fun stuff like tournaments and quizzes too. There's gonna be something for everybody, so come on over and make some sweet sweet music with us. Or just watch the videos. That works too. Like, share and subscribe at the link below and we will see you there. Bye. Bye.